Um, call it, oh, we are here. 21 questions. Thank you for even doing this show. Um, no problem. My pleasure. I love what you do. And um, I thought, you know what? I really want to just amplify and magnify your voice, your talent, and your person. So I thought, let's bring Shay down. Um, you didn't have to do it, but I thank you for doing it. You know, we had to rescheduling no and everything. My pleasure. But yeah, we're going to have fun. All right, so rules of 21 questions is this. You have 21 or so more questions to answer. Uh, you get one pass card, okay? So if you don't want to answer a question, you can use your pass card, all right? But the aim is to get to the end without using it, all right? Um, for everyone that is just joining us, welcome. Welcome to 21 Questions. If you have never, hey ever ever been here before welcome in uh, make sure you click the link in the bio afterwards we've got 33 i think we're up to 33 now 33 episodes that you can watch on youtube and listen to on spotify yeah how are you feeling i feel good i'm excited you feel, you're not nervous or anything a little bit you know but we'll see how it goes <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna start we're gonna go uh, we're gonna start light though all right uh, so I've got some light, quick fire questions for you. Let me get your timer up. Where's your timer? Okay. Cool. All right. So as it comes to your head, you just answer. First cool. question. What has been your hardest song to write and why? My hardest song? Okay. My hardest song to write is actually a song that's unreleased. It's not out yet, but it's called Rage. And um, okay. I wrote. I was, I was like super angry um, about Eesh. all the like injustices that were happening around the world and stuff. Yeah. And I felt mad heavy. And yeah, I wrote the song, and it's like so deep, guys. It's so deep. Jeez. I don't know when I'm gonna release it when I do. It's gonna be so <laughs> good, man. I forgot to actually ask. Could you give us a quick uh, three, five, ten second intro of who you are? People who've never ever seen before. Give a quick entry of who you are. Oh, of course. My name is Shay Universe, for anyone who Come doesn't on. know. And um, I'm a singer, songwriter, multifaceted creative. I've got a degree in American theatre art, so I do a bit of acting as well. You know okay. what I'm saying? Out Come here. On. Um, but yeah, most people would know me as a British R&B singer and songwriter. And um, yeah. That's what I do. Hopefully that was enough mm. of an introduction. No, that's fine. That's fine. Where does that name come from? Share you, the universe part. Um, so my sister actually helped me come up with the name, to be honest. At first I was called just Shay Artist, which okay. was a little bit, it was just a bit dry, to be honest. Like a lot of artists were just called their name and then the artist afterwards. So me and my sister sat down and then we brainstormed. Um, and yeah, she came up with the suggestion of Shay Universe and it just rang bells. Like, I don't know why, I didn't know why at the time. Now I know yeah. why. Yeah. of the way that things have just been aligning like crazy but yeah that's how it came about oh, i love it come on nice nice all right second question oh no so rage is coming out soon yeah and that uh, is what that was... I, I can't say i don't know if i can say soon okay um because there's, there's a specific feature that i want on the song and okay. i just have to wait until i you know manage to pattern that but yeah 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 100 yeah. 100 um what song do you wish you wrote one that's been released that's out there even by another artist um erica badu on and on oh all alone on and on on and on oh, oh. yeah i can't sing but you know that's my <laughs> that's my little video no, no, I'll, I'll sing that. through you i'll sing through you <laughs> i'm done <laughs> Yeah. Who, yeah, who would you? On. Oh, be on, on. Um, who would you love to see in concert, dead or alive? Like right now, in this period of time, that would really warm your soul. Michael Jackson. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I've only seen him once. I got to see him once in concert. You've seen Michael Jackson in concert. I was a, a, oh. a, in Wembley Stadium when it had two towers. Twin Towers. That's elite, you know. That's elite. <laughs> I wish. I wish I could have seen Michael live. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, everyone joining. Oh, my gosh. I see so many people that I know. Uh, big up to you, guys. Big up Montreal and Canada in the building. Uh, <laughs> tuning in. I remember when I was at the concert, yeah, I saw a look-alike, a look like, um, you know where people stand? 
Mm-hmm. I saw a lookalike down there, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's Michael. And I said to my dad, I want to go and see him. I want to go and see him. And he said, no. And I started to, I was wilding out. I didn't know it was a lookalike. I thought it was, I thought it was Michael. You thought it was actually Michael. I'm done. Yeah, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Um, what's the favorite, your favorite item in your wardrobe? Oof. My favorite, favorite item in my wardrobe, right now, currently, um, I recently bought these like leather trousers and they've got mm. like a bit of a split at the bottom. I've been wearing them a lot because <laughs> I really like them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say those right now. Leather trousers. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? <laughs> I can't say the most spontaneous thing I've ever done on camera still, but I will say, what's next in line? What's next in line? Yeah, g- give, <laughs> right, me, give me one that. spot here, boy. Uh, the, spon- the most spontaneous thing I've ever done? Uh, skinny dipped in uh, Switzerland. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, was that it? experience was so mad. I was with, like, all of my closest girls, yeah, and it was, yeah. like, not not super late to the point where it's pitch black, but mm-hmm. just that nice kind of, you know what I'm saying, dim light. Jumps yeah, yeah, yeah. Water. It was magical, boy. Oh, uh, nice. Nice. Uh, your time. But no, I've got one more question. Um, oh, time. What's your fave... No. No, no, no. I don't know. that one. What's your favourite worship song? Ooh. Um, my favourite worship song. Do you know what, yeah? I don't know if this is my favourite worship song of all time, but yeah. Um, recently, I don't know, I've just been singing this in the bathroom. I don't know what it's actually called, but it goes like, Jehovah, you are the most high. That one. Come on. I don't know, they always sing it in like, African churches and stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that's like, that's like a that. classic. Yeah, I've just been singing it like in my in my bathroom, and nice. I don't know why, but that's been resonating with me a lot recently. Nice, nice. Okay, well, that was quick fire. That was light work, light work. Light work. Uh, okay. That was just that's just a break you in a bit. Uh, but guys, I just want to welcome every single person that is with us today. Thank you take, for taking your time to join us. This is Twenty One Questions. I'm your host, Icy, and we have the amazing Shea Universe, um, and we've just been given a quick baptism of fire but we're going to go into it right now 21 questions one pass card so i want to read to you a tweet actually are you ready yeah of course <laughs> mm, this tweet so i found this tweet and it was about you oh <laughs> so it says here <clears throat> so i've just discovered you yesterday so he's added you he's added you uh, this is chase jedwoods um, I just discovered you yesterday, and I thought I was going to come on Twitter and be like, yo, everyone, there's this amazing new artist called Shea Universe, but I've logged on to see bare people follow you already, I'm proper late. <laughs> I remember <laughs> but, that tweet. But I've been listening to your music for less than 24 hours, and I genuinely think you are a star. I'm excited to follow your journey. You got this. 20, 12th of the 10th, 2020. And I, re- I resonate with him because I remember the first time I came across you was on Twitter and you were putting up, about 2017, 2018, you were put, putting up covers of songs on YouTube, on YouTube, on all social medias, but I couldn't see your head. So I was mm-hmm. like, who? I was like, I can hear the voice, but who is this? Because this voice, I love it. It's, it's killing it. And oh, from, from then... You. From then, I just wanted people to know about you and just know your voice because it was just so amazing. So I'm glad I resonate with Chase Jedwards. If you're in the building today, say hello. Um, but I want to ask about that time. What made you put those out, and especially with no face or anything? Um, you know what, yeah? I get asked this question quite often when I'm in interviews because obviously that was the like, inception of my career. And yeah. honestly, when now that I'm older and I can really put things into perspective, I was just a shy, timid girl that loved to sing. You know what I'm saying? I did not want 
necessarily all the like the mad spotlight. I just wanted to sing, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's just what I love to do. And you know what's so mad? I'm still that person. I'm yeah. actually still that person inside, secretly, you know what I'm saying? But obviously when I started doing the covers, it got me more traction, more people mm. wanted to start like hearing my original like music and stuff. Um yeah. but yeah, when I first started I just wanted to sing. Uh, and share my gift really and yeah. then yeah it just morphed into this wild crazy journey that I could have never imagined boy and do you ever wish I don't know do you ever wish you could go back to that time where it was just the purity of the music and sharing it or you're happy with the journey where it's gone so far that's a heavy question man you know what I do I actually do sometimes mm. because the, like <sighs> I don't know if there's still any artists in this live right now, yeah, music mm -hmm. artists, but or creators, period. But the yeah. industry is <laughs> some bull crap, y'all. That's some bull. I'm not. I'm not about it. I'm not mm. about it. Um, it's just so full of politics and drama. And if I could just make music and have it touch people around the world and yeah. not have to deal with the politics, that would be yeah. me. That would be yeah. me. But obviously, I manage myself. <laughs> so it's mad. Everything's coming directly to the source. And I have mm. to deal with all kinds of different people and have etiquette and conduct and professional, wow. you know? So it's, it's a lot. It's a lot still. <laughs> has, your, has your art ever suffered because of that? Mm, yeah. I feel like it has. Just sometimes when I have maybe like writer's block or... You know, I just can't, I just can't create as fluidly as I'd want to because I have a lot of things on my mind or yeah. I need to sort out certain things or, you know what I'm saying? But not too much though. I always bounce yeah. back. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for sharing that, man. Um, tell me about growing up in Nigeria and like the, the best parts of it. Growing up in Nigeria, rah. So I, I only stayed there for four years. I came mm. here when I was four. Um... But I do remember certain things. Like, my dad used to ride uh, a motorbike. Okay. And he would actually, even though I was mad young, yeah, he would actually put me on the motorbike. So <laughs> I can say it now because I'm alive. I didn't die. You know what I'm but, yeah, that was, like, fun. I remember the breeze just being, like, <laughs> in my face. <laughs> um, and obviously in Nigeria as well, everyone's just, at that time, um, everyone was just, like, cool, accepting, you know what I'm saying? Um, you could just be yourself. Obviously, I was really young in it, so it's like, how much can you really notice? But now that I'm old enough to, to understand vibes and stuff, mm -hmm. I think moving to the UK made me a lot more conscious. So mm. when I was back, when I was like younger, I just felt more free. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, however, I don't know. I've, I've taken good things from both experiences. I think I'm, I'm quite blessed to have been able to experience both cultures. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. they've definitely shaped who I am. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, some of the arcs, GJ said, what city in Nigeria did you live in? I was, um, so I was born in Patakot. I was Ooh. born in Patakot, but then, um, well, please don't judge me because whenever I say Patakot, <laughs> yeah, my brother says, why do you Potakot. Like that? Yeah. Potakot, exactly. <laughs> but I don't know, this is just how, this is just how I say it. I think I'm too westernized, guys, low key. Even but, when, um, you, when you said it, I was like, this and that she's talking about some other place. No, but bearing in mind, bearing in mind, yeah, my parents stopped speaking. Like, they do not speak Igbo to me. They, I don't oh. know why I asked them to speak that. Like, from young, I've been like, please, I want to learn. But they just, mm. they just didn't. I feel like wow. they really wanted me to become quite westernised. <laughs> they wanted me to be, like, proper, you know, English. And it had its benefits as well, because I was always really good at English in school. That's what led to, like, the poetry, the writing. Ah, the OK. Song, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, yeah. I just, I still want to learn, to be honest. So if anybody here can speak Ibo and wants to teach me, please, I'm here. We're um, here. <laughs> but yeah, Nigeria. Interesting place, man. <laughs> what was, um, at that time, what was your, what was your relationship with your parents like? And how, how does, does that change to what it is now? Hmm. Um... My relationship with my parents is actually a really beautiful one, you know. Like, I'm blessed to be able to say that because obviously... I'm a creative, and as we all know, African parents generally, you know, deem creative industries as not like a real job, you know, they feel like you can't make money from it, um, that type of stuff. But my parents actually noticed my gift quite young, and they were really supportive, like, they actually cultivated the gift, they realised that it wasn't just a little hobby, you know what I'm saying, like, I really 
had a thing for this. And so they've always been really supportive. I feel like, obviously, I'm a first daughter. I'm a first child, actually, period. And obviously, mm. I'm a girl as well. So <laughs> I don't know if you know how that story go, but <laughs> it, like, I, I, I got the firmest hand of my, my parents, wow. basically. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like as a first child, period, you just, your your parents' first experience of a child. You know what I'm saying? So True, true. Yeah, there was there was certain things with that. But now I'm at a place where I'm just at so much peace, man. Me and my parents have a really close relationship. I literally feel comfortable to tell them anything. You know mm. what I'm saying? And yeah, it's good. It, does that mirror something that you would like to have with, if you just have to have children? Definitely. I really, I do want to have children. I'm not sure when that's going to come, but <laughs> I do definitely. It's gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely want to imp- um, input that into my future generations, like that closeness. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if you can't be 100% open with your family, it's a bit mad, you know, because then you're just going to go to outsiders. I'm not to say there's anything wrong with outsiders. Like, I've encountered a couple special people in my life that I can say, yeah, like, I, you might as well be family. But those people are few and far between. So yeah, you might as good, well keep good. your family close, I think. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Has there been, because you've kind of morphed um, and you've transitioned in your journey from being a young person, being to who you are now, what things have you had to let go of to be the Shay you are now? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please can you repeat the question? Because I was reading Romario's comment. <laughs> oh, okay. And no I'm worries. so bad at multitasking. Like, literally, it's so bad. I'm like a goldfish. So fine. It's fine. I was saying, like, you, because you've transitioned from, you know, transitioned from how you were as a child into a full-blown adult. What things have you let go of or had to let go of to be who you are now? <clears throat> pride oh in what sense um, i've never really been like an arrogant person to be honest but i feel like even on the level that i am like okay uh the only way that i can put this into context is by giving like examples of my real actual life yeah so say please for example, do i'm someone that i'm very level-headed um for the most part apart from if you catch me on my period you know what i'm saying then i might i might i'm not liable i don't know but um, uh, no, generally, seriously though, generally speaking, I'm like a very calm person. And I think because of that, and a very humble person, naturally, yeah? It's not like, a, it's not a facade or like an act, you know what I'm saying? This is actually who I am and how I am. Mm. And I feel like sometimes in the industry, when you're in a position like mine where your gift like speaks so loud for you, mm. but you're just like, yeah, like I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Anyone can hit me up, anyone can talk to me, anyone can chat to me because even though my gift is loud, I acknowledge that I'm still a human being like everyone else. That can, sometimes, some people can get the wires crossed, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Sometimes people sometimes people feel like, oh, because she's approachable or because she's down to earth, she can't be, she can't be all that then. I can finesse or I can exploit. And I've had plenty of experiences like that. Um, but even in that, I had to still learn to let go of pride because pride would lead me to just out people. What? Mm. Who do you think you are? Ch- what, me? You're trying to take the look out of me? Okay, mm. I might not have the followers right now, but I will out you and yeah, yeah, just yeah. move out of character. Do you know what I'm saying? If I was to be prideful, it would make me move out of character. However, mm. I've still, within certain situations, had to say to myself, you know what, yeah? You could. You could move mad. Or... You could honour your true character yeah, yeah, and continue to work hard to get to where it is that you need to be. And when you get to that point, what else? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You still have proven to yourself that yeah. you could do whatever. Like, It doesn't take anything away from you. This is what I've learned. Obviously, there's certain times where you need to tell people about themselves. Can't lie. But, <laughs> you know, I just, I tend to keep it really calm. So yeah, letting go of pride is one thing. Um, and also as well, just in being an artist as well, because I don't know, but artists here yeah, are mad, like, you know how artists are. I feel like obviously a lot of us have to be that way because it's like, if you're not hyping up your team, then who else you know, is going to Who else is gonna do it? Um, mm. Again, I'm in a blessed situation where I have people that hype my thing regardless, do you know what I'm saying? And mm. that, I feel like for my specific journey, that was kind of necessary. It was needed because I didn't even know my own worth when I came into this thing. I was just like, yeah, I'm just singing like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even know myself. So 
everything everyone's journey is different everything happens for a specific reason you know what i'm saying but yeah um there's that what else have i had to change um again kind of linked back to the timidness and the shyness yeah i wouldn't say i've changed it because i am still humble i'm still down to earth but i definitely know my worth now still much more than i did before to the point where it's like like i just i know myself in it you can't and i've because i've done everything for myself you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. being my own manager means i have to do everything for myself i put through all my paperwork i liaise with everyone blah, blah, blah. i know all the nooks and crannies so now it's like you have to talk to me nice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what i'm saying like <laughs> yeah exactly yeah do you in doing having to do all that yourself yeah is there a part of you that Is there part of you that doesn't want to give up control? Oh, definitely, man. And yeah. it's bad. It's bad because, to be honest with you, I know that I'm definitely going to need management soon. Like, yeah. Once I drop this project specifically, Come on. I know I'm going to need management. Like, I know there's already so many things I'm doing. Outside of music, I'm actually a vocal coach. So I have, oh. like, I teach people, yeah, I um, host vocal lessons. Pick up all my vocal clients because they're so amazing and they literally help my mental health so much. But, yeah, um, oh. <laughs> yeah i do that as well and that's like it's just so much to keep up with oh my gosh like so i know i'm gonna need management but honestly it is hard <laughs> mm. because i find that because i've been doing certain things my own way for a while you know what i'm saying and then yeah just like my things done a certain way to a certain standard blah, 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 blah. I have to learn to also just, you know, release and be yeah. open to new relationships for me. Now, I'm going to be honest. No. <laughs> no, no, I totally understand that. I mean, I did lose it back in the day. Still do it a little bit now. But one of the most difficult things was to entrust your heart. Because this music is, is, is art, but it's your heart in music mm-hmm. form. 100%. And if you're going to hand that, I'm handing it over to you. If you drop that, I'm just going to have to take it back. And when I take Mm. it back, I'm going to guard it 10 times as hard as before. So Mm. it's such a difficult thing. You have to find that manager who really gets it, who really understands it, who really understands you. This is the thing. And that is hard. This is the thing, man. And like, yeah, it's just hard. do Do you fear that sometimes? Because it's almost like, the more you climb, mm-hmm. the less you'll be able to control. The less you'll be able to control, the more you'll have to give out to people. Man, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, yeah, but obviously, I'm, I am a big believer in broken walls, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know that there's blueprints, I know that there's ways of doing things, like, you know, from people that have done it before and whatnot, but like, I believe in breakthrough. I believe in pioneership. I believe in just believing in your thing and making it run, even if you've never seen it done that way before. Not to yeah. say, yeah, that when I get to big, big global star levels, it's just going to be, you know, like, you have to also be realistic as well. But I feel like you can make it work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, this is just my belief. Obviously, I might just be being naive. I've never, I haven't gotten to that point yet to know what it's like, but yeah, I feel like I can still be in a position where I just I don't feel just mad out of touch with what's happening with my own self yeah. and my own branding and my own artistry. 100%. You know what I'm saying? I never want to be at that point where it's like I'm just making the music and I don't know what the heck is going on. Yeah. Like, oh oh my gosh. I yeah. still want to be an active part of everything to do with me and my journey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I don't think that will ever change. And I'm obviously going to try and strive to make sure that's the case. Yeah. And I think I think what you're doing now is doing that because you're building leverage, and leverage is is invaluable. You need that leverage where you're like, I've done all this on my own. So whatever you're bringing, you better you better up your price because what I've yeah. done, what I've endured, what I've I've gone through to get here on my own, you better whatever yeah. you, whatever, whatever number you were thinking, times it by a hundred, and then come through. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Them ones. Oh, them ones. Come like. on. <laughs> oh, I love you, Saskia. I see so much nice comments. Hey, big up, Saskia. Saskia yeah, says they don't Saskia. make them like this no more. She says, I want to hug you through this <laughs> damn phone screen. 
<laughs> oh, no. That's not Big up, Saskia. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, what did I want to ask you? Yeah, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned about singing in innocence, singing because you wanted to sing and just putting yeah. it out there. But some of your actual uh, posts went viral and you had mm. people like Chance, Chance the Rapper posting and everything. Mm. What did it feel like to go viral in, the, in that time? Do you know what's so mad, yeah? I'm actually low-key glad that I went viral at the time that I did because mm. then time I said, I didn't even really know viral to be what I know it now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, mm. right, this is catching traction. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm glad that it happened when it did because now the internet is a much scarier place, I think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like people yeah. are so much more volatile and just crazy. So, and at that time, when I was just fresh on this, like, fresh on it, I definitely, I don't think I would have been mentally strong enough still to just take all the weirdness mm -hmm. and the crazy people and the trolls and the, but, um, it was, it was purposeful. That's mm -hmm. what I can say. That happening at the time it did so early in my career was definitely purposeful because now that, you know, other things have happened in my career, I still get gassed, obviously. I still get excited and stuff. But what that experience taught me is that you can get cosigns from the biggest people in the world. You still have to put in the work. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's it. Just because somebody cosigns you doesn't mean, oh my gosh, tomorrow you're going to blow and be the biggest star. Do you know what I'm saying? It yeah. means that they see something in you. So keep going, mm. but still mm. put in the work. So that's what that taught me. And I feel like, obviously, those things gave me fuel to be like, rah, okay, okay. Like, I must have something then if people are acknowledging da 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 So, yeah, it was nice. It was reassuring. Is there anything that's happened since then? Obviously, your, pro your career's progressed so much since then. What are you most proud of as oh, an achievement? There's a lot of things, man. There's a lot of things still. But um, I think <clears throat> first would be opening for Eminem. I always say this one, but I'm never going to stop saying it because... <laughs> say it, <laughs> sing it. 80,000. Guys. 80,000 yeah. people. This is what I'm saying. Like, in a, in a stadium. Cool. Like, it's just so mad. Honestly, I'll never get over it because Eminem was someone that I listened to as a child. I feel like everybody had an error when we were listening to Eminem. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to be open for him was just mad. It's like, I'm how, just doing this. How, does, how did that even happen? <laughs> uh, so he's got an artist signed to his label called Boogie. And Boogie discovered me through Instagram. And then like, wow. that, I started biking. And then, yeah, trust me, it's mad, man. It's mad. Um, and then, Did you meet him? Yeah. Yeah. 50 Cent, 2 chains. Come on. Yo, it was just a madness. <laughs> it was a madness. I, I was just so mad. But yeah, that was a sick experience. Um, what else? There's so many things. I went to Grammy Week earlier this year in January. Um, I was invited oh. out. And whilst I was there, I actually went to um, LMA's, LMA and DJ Mustard's Grammy nomination party um, in Beverly Hills. And honestly, like, I've never seen... You know, that was like my first taste of like bougie life. Like, oh my mm. gosh people actually live like this you know what i'm saying mm. so that was quite a big deal for me because it it just made me feel like i'm i'm close i can touch it mm. you know what i'm saying um and that gave me like a new little fire inside myself um this year i actually got my first movie feature that one that one was a big one like i can't i can't like <laughs> announce too much because the film isn't actually oh. sorry sorry that was my battery flashing at me um oh, i can't announce too much because it ha it isn't officially out yet but yeah that's gonna be my vision board for a while for one of my songs to land like a in, to be in a movie so really proud of that come on uh, guys I can we have a round of applause in the comment section please can we rate this highly come oh, on thank you and um, the last on. one the last one boy I can't even reveal that because it's not been announced <laughs> yet. But you guys will know what is who on Sunday. Oh my gosh! Oh this really? One here, this I'm like this oh, Sunday. Oh my gosh. 
yeah, this Sunday. You guys will know what's up. You guys will know what's good. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm so no, excited. you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You have to give us something, something to hold on to. Some crumbs. Give us some crumbs, shit. What crumbs can I give you, boy? What crumbs can I give you? Wait, wait, wait. What? Okay. I might give you a little clue, but what's the clue? Come on, um, give us some crumbs. Okay, it's... Hmm. Oh, I don't want to get too much away. Right? I'm just going to say something very vague. You know what I'm okay, going to be. It can be anything, but... Don't worry. On Sunday, we'll rewind this and go back to here. It's um linked... No, wait. It's an affiliation with America. That's what I'm giving y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I'm going to just leave it there. And you okay, know, okay. We're going to wait. Interpret that how you want. Any time in particular, we have to wait on Sunday. Hmm, I can't give you that yet. But I will, too. <laughs> well, whatever it is, a thousand congratulations. Thank you. Because if it's making you feel this way, then it's good. It's Yo, good. Thank you, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, tell me, guys, whoever's just been joining us, who just joined us, we are doing 21 questions with Shea Universe. She's been talking about her childhood, just to touch about her childhood, her come up. Um, and it's hard. It's not easy. What you see on front of the screen is not always what it is behind the scenes. But she has grinded and she's going through um, and we're just trying to give her her flowers now because there are things that she has done and things that are coming up that are going to, amen, blow our mind. So um, just like Saskia said, we cannot click our fingers enough. <laughs> she said we can't click our fingers enough. Keep going, keep going. Um, I wanted to ask about your... You sing and you rap. And I don't think people... Shine huh? the light on that. Say again. What did you say? I said you sing, but you also rap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people shine light on that enough. And I wanted to ask which one you prefer. Oh, oh, I definitely prefer singing, just because I feel like I'm also more confident with singing. You know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. I've been doing it for longer. It's how I started, so I'm more confident when it comes to singing. But rapping, I do love rapping still. I love how it feels when I release via rapping, but I would say singing takes it a bit more. I, I love your combination is great though. I like how you, I think the fact that you find more confidence in it means that you give us only the sprinkling of the rap. And because we only get sprinkles, then it's like when it comes, <laughs> we're like, oh, oh, that was amazing. Okay, cool, Thank cool. You. Thank you. Nice. I like it. I like it. Um, you, a couple of years ago, you cut down doing a lot of your live performances. Why did you, why, why did you cut down? Because um, at that point in time, I had performed so at so many places in London. This was like in the early stages of my career, yeah? So mm. I was literally performing everywhere because I wanted to get my name everywhere and be seen as much as possible. And obviously I was doing a lot, um, lots of shows for free, um, open mic nights, you know, just grinding and hustling before people actually knew who I was type of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it got to a point where it's like, wow, I performed at Bear Places uh, and I'm now broke because I haven't been getting paid from these shows. <laughs> but I've been, you know, I've just been travelling down to all of these places or whatever. And my name was out there enough for me to be able to just like step back type of thing. Then yeah. obviously I focused more on like working on music. And then, yeah, it's like as I released the music and that got my name out more now, you know, shows would come to me. Now they're actually not nice. to pay me. Now things like that. So yeah, you know, that's why I just withdrew a bit, um, mm. so I could progress. Yeah, that's, I like that. Do you? What do you love the most about live performance? The energy, man. The energy, man. Let me tell you something, yeah. <laughs> when I perform live, this sounds mad. This sounds mad, but if you go and watch back, like, you know, the live videos on my profile and stuff, when I perform live, I can actually feel the healing that is taking place. Wow. It's, it's a deeper thing, like, and, you know, I was watching back um, 
one of the foot, like one of the videos from one of my recent shows, yeah. And um, there was like two girls sitting at the front, and I was singing um, "Yeba My Mind," mm -hmm. and it's like at some point, it's like the, um, one of the girls that like, just rubbed the other girl's shoulder. I don't know if she was crying wow. or if she was just like emotional or whatever, but she was sitting right in front, like right in front of me, and I could feel, I could just feel like that she was getting so much from the sound that was coming out of my mouth. I don't know how to explain nice. it. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's definitely an energy thing, man. I feel energy on the deepest, deepest level. And it's just so beautiful knowing that through my gift, like people feel alleviated mm. or free yeah. or, you know, sexy or whatever it is that makes them feel like, yeah. Have you had any um, wow stories that have come to you where people have DM'd you, messaged you of, of, of the effects of your music? Um, yeah, so I had one, um, a pregnant woman who was getting like real, real bad, like, um, I guess you could call it contractions. Mm. And yeah, she played my music. She played Misunderstood. And okay. they just ceased, like they just stopped. And she's messaging me, <laughs> oh my gosh, like your music, da da da, da. Obviously that's a, that's a mad one, but I was like, right, okay. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. Um, I'm trying to think if there's been anything else. Ryan, Ryan said, you have that effect on people, like especially at your more intimate shows. The whole crowd is just feeling your vibes, like your voice gives us chills. That's beautiful. Aww, thank you. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate That's it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And what does, that, what does that do for you personally when you hear these things? Because I know that when I used to perform and, you know, people would say stuff, it would come in one ear, but just go out in the other ear because I just. Really? I don't know if I. T yeah, because I wouldn't take it in. I would just be like, oh, okay. But. <laughs> you said, oh, okay. I think because so I, I, I didn't believe it. But it's only wow. on time, like reflecting, it kind of. I would have accept it. So for you, do, do you accept it immediately or does it take time? You know what? I feel you on that, you know. I feel you on the not believing thing. I don't think that's the case, like, anymore, to be honest. But I think I did yeah. have a stage at the beginning where it was just overwhelming for me. Like, I was just like, wow, yeah. all of these people are showing me love. Like, what? Um, <laughs> but I uh, just see a comment. Uh, yeah, the song's out. By the way, guys, I have, like, a, a live session that's just dropped with a platform called Breaking Notes. And someone in the comments just asked if the okay. song that I'm singing is actually out. It's Levels that I performed, and, yeah, it's out right now. Oh, so yes, Levels, it's, yeah. out. it's got a music video, too, so please go check that out. Yeah, and Levels. Give it a like and stuff. But, yeah, um, what was I saying? Oh, my gosh, my memory's like a goldfish. So you said that it, you were there before, but now you kind of do accept it. Oh, yeah, now. Now, I definitely am just more accepting of it. It's just like, this is what I do it for. You know what I'm saying? So when the love is coming, it's like, just embrace yeah. it, girl. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Embrace it. This is what you have worked hard to get to. Um, and it's just encouraging more than anything else. Like, I used to actually screenshot all the messages that I would get and keep them in, like, a folder. To, awesome. like, the but then it just started getting to a point where my memory <laughs> was getting full. <laughs> and I couldn't screenshot everything. So Gets like I that. appreciate it for what it is, yeah. Come on. And that's even that, that's a journey in itself because I think that's reflective of the journey you're going through inside. Mm. Where the more you're owning what you do and the greatness at which you do it, mm. like you said, you expect, yeah, well, it was a good performance. And th mm. thank you for acknowledging that. I knew it first, but mm. thank you for acknowledging that. And I think there has to come a point where, as creatives, no matter the field we're in, we can look at our work and say, you know what? Mm. Yeah, that was great. Because yeah. sometimes we play this humble game, and especially in Britain, the British culture is very uh, timid and don't boast too much. Where in America, they're just like, yo, I killed mm -hmm. that. I killed mm -hmm. that. But in, mm -hmm. over, here, we're very, <laughs> we're just, <laughs> over here, we're very like modest. And, but no, we need to, in ourselves, recognise the greatness. And then when others recognise it, we acknowledge that. All right, cool. But I knew it first. And I think mm -hmm. you've, you've, got to, you've got to know it first. 100%. Um, there's a song that you you release, Move. Wow, and in that, old school, boy. Yeah, in that, you sing, this is some of the song, the lyrics, you said, this feeling, I'm not going to sing it. I'm not because I cannot sing, but I'm going to read it. This feeling is so sublime. I know it took me some time to love everything I am, but now I understand 
I'm worth so much more. Ha. Mm. 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 <laughs> Those lyrics are some people's life. Those lyrics are some people's life. The journey to self-love, the journey to actually loving yourself. And I wanted to ask, what was that journey like for you, getting to a place of self-love and, and ownership? Mm. Um, to be honest with you, if I'm being frankly, brutally honest, I'm definitely still on the journey now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there's still, like, you know, way to go. However, I have come a long way from where I was. And mm. I think... Oof, and where was it? When you say where I was, where was that? What state were you I in? I feel like I just had this, like, this just whole image dysmorphia at some point. I don't know if it's a thing that, like, all black women go through or whether it was just specific to me, but I just struggled to see myself as beautiful, genuinely. Mm. When I would look at myself with the features that God gave me, I can't change my face, do you know what I'm saying? This is what I look like. I would just think, oh, and that's so sad, like, that I would look at myself and just think, oh, you're not beautiful because, I don't know, my nose isn't the smallest or my, my face isn't bang on symmetrical or whatever it is, whatever the yeah. insecurity was. And I think that was definitely influenced by a lot of, you know, cultural stuff. You, you hear how, you know, dark skin women just seem to be at the butt of, like, jokes, you know, or, or seem to be at the butt of jokes at a certain period of time. It was, like, this collective thing that people just yeah. did. And at the time, it was, like, banter, but this actually affected people in real life. It had long lasting effects on people. It actually changed the way people viewed themselves and, Damn. you know, beauty standards. Like when we talk about beauty standards, it's a real thing, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. literally, and yeah, I just, I feel like I, that just affected me a little bit. Um, yeah, and just made me kind of see myself in a warped way. Nice. And then it's like, you obviously get older, and you just you just start to get a grip of life or what it is to you and like understand that actually i only have this one life you know what i'm yeah. saying and i can't live it miserable especially i'm i'm me you know what i'm saying and i have to embrace that and i have to love that so i just started to um say affirmations um <laughs> to myself i would just say things to myself in the mirror who i'm surrounded with as well has made a real big difference i can't lie all my loved ones my family they all make me feel beautiful. Do you know what I'm saying? They make me feel amazing. Not even just beautiful, like an amazing person. They always affirm me or reassure me of my character as wow. well. And that greatly helps too. Um, and then, you know what, yeah? This sounds weird, but being a good person. Being a what? So I'm going to have to get my charger in a minute because my battery has somehow gone from 20% to 10%. I don't understand my phone is doing the most. But yeah, um, what was I going to say? Uh, you, said be, you said being a good... Being a good, yeah, being a good person. Yeah, as oh, in like okay. keeping, my heart, keeping my heart clean mm. also has helped me build confidence. Like, and that sounds weird or random, like it's not connected, but it is though, because if you go around being a horrible person or you know you've done X, Y, and Z person dirt, dirty, you can't walk around comfortably. No. You know what I'm saying? No. You can't walk around being short of yourself or, you know, 100% secure that no one's just going to draw you out or come for your character and succeed at it because you know who you are and you know the principles that you honour. So that as well has actually given me a sense of security as well, I would say. No. That's beautiful, man. Mm. That's beautiful. Shay, Shay, keep an eye on your email. Oh, am I, okay, someone's going to send you some music. That's nice. Um, but I like yeah, that. I That's... that. Uh -huh. That's deep, man. That's like, that's beautiful. And I like that you said that you're still on that journey because some, for some, for a lot of us, that journey is an ongoing one. Good days, mm -hmm. some days are bad days. I've got a scar on my head. And like you said, mm -hmm. the, the standards, even as a male, the standards mm -hmm. of beauty, um, I, I'm supposed to look this way or supposed to have this look or whatever mm -hmm. I've had to mm -hmm. talk to myself and say I remember I looked in the mirror one day I was wearing a hat I'm only wearing a hat because my hair man the barbers uh but I, I remember I used to wear a hat everywhere I used to wear a hat wow. everywhere because I didn't want anyone to see my scar if I was going mm -hmm. into a building and I had mm -hmm. my hat on you wouldn't ask me questions yeah. and I would only go to places with people I know 
because they because wow. they affirmed me and they yeah. were they had they had already accepted me so I wouldn't need you and then I think <laughs> I looked in the mirror one day before I was going to leave and I said you know what but whether you wear this hat or not do you know the scar's still there mm. and I said you know what if this is how God has allowed me to be mm-hmm. then let me I'm going to embrace that let me just let me t- let me take that on and so now now I'd say more I'd, I'd say I'm I'm much more better at it. I'll just go wherever I am and however I am. However oh. I look is how I look. Yeah. And if that's not to your liking, well, that just has nothing to do with you. That has <laughs> yeah, nothing exactly. to do with you. Exactly. You know. I'm saying. I see um, I in the comments saying, our sisters are pengers, though. Period, Amen. cool. Come on. Period. <laughs> I'm going to literally run and get my charger. It's right here. So no, fine. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's Ooh. fine. Two sex. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, big up to everyone that is joining us um, and commenting. Could you comment in the comment section? I want to know how you're finding this. Um, some beautiful gems being shared, man. Like, these are things that sometimes the music can't always translate or the music can't always communicate. So it's great for Shay to kind of just give you that behind the scenes look and understanding, you know, of how it really is, man. So we thank you, Shay, for sharing. Because there's a lot of stuff. You don't have to share this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh, good, man. My but, pleasure. Um, you're keeping it honest and you're keeping it real, so we thank you, man. Uh, guys, make sure you go on Shay's page afterwards. If you've heard her name but not checked out her music, do yourself that justice and go and check it out. Check out the live project. And on Sunday, hmm, Shay has on built... On Sunday, you're going to know. <laughs> You are going to know, boy. Shay has really drummed this thing up, so I can't wait. Sunday. I'm, sorry, I'm struggling with games. <laughs> <laughs> on Sunday, make sure you go on her page and check out what her new, uh, this new project is, man. Um, yeah. Have you got any Guys, questions? Yes, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> what am I doing? All right, let me, let me do this real quick. I'm sorry, oh, guys. No, it's fine. Okay, cool. Before my phone dies, woo! No, that's fine. Do you know one of my favourite songs is, um, look at me saying one of my favourite songs, I can't remember the name of it. Let me get it up right now. I sing this in my car um, when I go driving at night. So if I go driving at night, I'll sing it because I just love the harmonies. Uh, What song is it now? It's nice. mm-hmm. You can tell me it. What's this? What's the song with you and Etta? Um, no more love. That's it. Come on. No more love. Yeah. Anyway, but I love. I love that. <laughs> Vocals, yeah. Vocals, yeah. I love that. Your harmonies on that and that. The one that um, the harmony that. This, sorry, the last part that you two do, um, mm-hmm. and your harmonies are just intertwining. I'm just like, gunshots all of the days, okay? Gunshots, um, gunshots, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, how did that come about with um, Etta? You know what's so mad? I've been listening to Etta Bond since I was in school. Like, I was, I was, I've been a fan of Etta Bond, for real. Um, and I remember I DM'd her at like the start of, 2018 I think and I was just like oh my gosh like basically just finding out I can't lie just like I'm, I'm such a big fan da, 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 da. I don't know if we will ever get to work together but that type of vibe in it I was standing can't lie it's got and, then, and I left I DM'd her and she just she didn't read it or she didn't open it um for like a year then I released no stalling and then oh, she she heard no stalling and yeah she hit me up and she was like yeah. Damn. Yeah, she was like, I love this song. Um, you know, I love this song. Like, can we work together type of thing? And I was just like, wow. Look at how the universe works, man. So wait, were you, did she DM you as well? Did she DM that same message? Um, yeah, she saw the message and she was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even see this. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was mad still. Okay. So we're imagine... Having a you... That's Sorry, we're having a dilemma because this plug in my house yet is not working. Basically, yeah, I'm having renovations done right now. So 
the builders are like tampering with stuff and i don't know why that particular plug is not working but yeah you can you can keep talking to me i'm just gonna find another plug yeah okay cool cool um no i was just gonna say no there was a great thing to see you on that album and it's because of my favorite song then i was even more happy and i love etta as well so yes yeah um, big up etta man she's good vibes. big up big up um stalling in itself hit one million streams yes it did Please, can we get a round of applause in the comment section, please? Thank because, you. Because one million streams, yeah, is not, it's not a joke. Like, especially when you're pushing and striving to do this on your own, to hit one million, it really gives you the understanding that the people are backing you. Do you know what I'm saying? No, and the people are behind you. I wanted to ask how it felt for you when you, when you realised it was one million. Um... To be honest with you, yeah, I was, I was in, I was in disbelief, man. <laughs> I was in disbelief because it's just like, that's a song that I wrote in my bedroom. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's a song that I wrote sitting in my bedroom, first recorded <laughs> on like my iPhone earphones, and then eventually morphed into an idea. It was just like raw. After that happened, yeah, it was just, it just made me realize, yo, you can literally have a concept, an idea right now in this room yeah. and if you put enough love and passion into that thing you could take it anywhere <laughs> you could take it anywhere so it was yeah it was big still and just love to everyone that has been supporting my journey thus far and continues to because an artist at my level you are literally what keeps me afloat you are how i do you know you're how i built so thank you guys i love you all hey even bro. more Big up, Sorry. Ally, Ally, babe. Big up, Elias. <laughs> That's right. And even more beautiful was watching one of my favourite actors, but then hearing one of my favourite artists at the same time. So watching mm. um, Michaela Kowal um, on I May Destroy, and then your song coming on. Did wow. you know that was going to happen? No, I didn't, you know. <laughs> like, because, you know what? Because the song is not, it's not actually my song, like, originally. Okay. I'm just featuring on the song as a singer. Oh, so okay. the song is actually by an artist called um, World Peace Oscar. And, yeah, he just asked me to be, like, the feature singer. So he's not on it at all. I'm just singing on it. And then he got, like, some people to just t talk on it that he interviewed. Wow. It, was like a, it was cool. It was a cool vibe. Um, and that song was released years ago. Do you know what I'm saying? So I was like, what? This is so <laughs> random. But, hey, again. And when, when did you know about it? Um, so I actually saw the producer post about it on the day, I think it was, I don't know how many episodes had come out at this point. No, I think it was the day that episode five had come out, because that's the episode that our song featured in. And yeah, he, he posted it on Instagram, and I was like, wait, hold on. I'm listening to the song, and I'm like, no, don't tell me my part is going to play. <laughs> and then it plays, and then it was just like, oh. Oh my gosh. I hope you... It was just mad. Big blessings. That was another big one on the vision board. I hope you are soaking in this stuff, man, when it's happening. And that you're really just sitting in it. And mm -hmm. because, like I said, it's easy to just be like, oh, man, that happened. But it happened. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it, it happened. And, like, these are major wins. Like, find a way to... Someone, people, some people always say, oh, when I get a major win, I buy a watch or I buy a car. So whatever mm. works for you, but mm. always find a way to be able to um, be proud of yourself, man. Be mm -hmm. proud of it, because these are, these are beautiful things. These are beautiful things. Um, all right, sense. cool. Last kind of question I wanted to ask you um, is in 2013, <laughs> in 2013, you won the Woman of Praise Award. <laughs> hey. you so are... done. How did you even how did you even like find that piece of it? I'm so done. You I found it in a picture. Wow. And you were you were posing in front of the mirror and on the dresser was the award. And I was like, what award is that? And so as I zoomed in, it said Woman of Praise Award. I was like, this is amazing. You know what? Do you know what? Yeah, I was thinking to myself, no, 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 wait, because <laughs> I, I can't lie, I was buying a bit of time because I was thinking, is my memory just this crap here that I can't actually remember receiving this award? Or, but do you know what award you saw? You saw an award that actually belonged to my mum. So my mum's no a way. Singer, yeah, 
Yeah, she's a gospel singer. <laughs> she's a gospel singer, and um, that's what she does. What's her name? Isabella. Isabella, okay. Yeah. I want to say she won that award. Like, <laughs> yeah, so she's won better awards, I can't lie. Like, she had a period of time where she was literally travelling around the world and just, like, ministering at different churches and stuff. Like, wow. you know that thing still? Big up Mumsy, man. Big up Mumsy. Um, but yeah, that's, those are... <laughs> <laughs> Those are her awards on the on the desk, not me. I was thinking, oh, okay. hey, I'm gonna praise. She said I was in the choir. I was in the choir. Yeah, they yeah. did like hand out awards and that. But I was thinking, nah, there's no way. There's no way. <laughs> how much? How much does faith play a part in in your journey and what you've done? Oh my gosh, like three hundred billion trillion percent. Three hundred billion trillion percent. Um, I yo, I just. The thing is, obviously, I've seen I've seen tokens to solidify and reassure me that I'm doing the right thing. For example, the cosigns or the love that I receive or reaching a million streams or whatever it might be. But there's always still a risk, like, being taken. You know what I'm saying? Um, thank you, Olufemi. There's always still a risk being taken. Like, you never know. You never know, man. Honestly, there's no rules in this music industry. Like, mm. people feel like they know what it is you need to do or what, what avenue you should go in, but everybody's winging it, okay? Yeah, everybody's 100%. doing what they feel like is the right thing to 100%. do, but you never know at what point in your journey something's going to kick off or... You know what I'm saying? So... Mm. Is, um, is there an end goal for you where you'd be like, okay, I've reached it? reached it yes we're here i just got chills on my body man <laughs> i just got chills on my body because i'm like Rah, will there ever be a point where it's like that um love you too i feel like i feel like yeah when i'm a globally known and respected artist like all around the world yeah I don't have to worry about, oh, when I drop a song, if it's going to do well yeah, or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have to worry about, yeah, when I drop a song, is it going to do well? Is it going to have good sales or whatever? It's just... Mm, it's automatic. Once, yeah, once I'm at that level and my family's living nice, my loved ones are living nice, I'm living nice, comfortable, I've got my bae and all of them things, you know what I'm saying? I feel like... I don't know, man. I don't know if I'll ever feel 100%. I, I'm always going to want to make more music, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something I'm always going to do. But there is going to come a point in my life where I'm, I think I'm going to be able to just feel like, oh, okay, you don't have to hustle, hustle, hustle as hard. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's why I'm hustling yeah. now, so that we can get to a stage where we don't have to hustle as hard and we can just chill out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's good. How, how would you like to be remembered? People look back on your career um, when they look at your music, when they look at who you are as a person. How would you like to be remembered? I would like to be remembered as someone who tra um, stayed true to herself and someone who got to, like, uh, you know a respected, valued level, yeah? Because, you know, there's a difference between, like, being liked or being popular yeah. and being respected and being valued, yeah? yeah? Being someone that your community actually champions and holds yeah. as now. This person done some stuff for our community. This person represented, you know what I'm saying? Um, a respected, valued woman who didn't have to conform? Mm. Who didn't have to conform? Come on, say. Like, who, who actually could just honour herself and her heart and her mm. principles and her morals and her ways of being and it run? Because I feel yeah. like, especially being a, mu a woman in the music industry, yeah, we're boxed in, you know? We are boxed yeah. in or they try to box us in. It's like you're either just this way or you're just this that way. Or if you do one song, all of a sudden it's like you're this person or you're this persona. Nah, I'm a multifaceted wow. woman with many different sides and many different talents and many different ways of being. Yeah. And depending on my mood, mm. that's how I am. 
You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm going to come yeah. forward and present all of those ty- all of those sides and God willing, have that be accepted. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like that mm. would be a lot for a lot of women. <clears throat> Personally, a lot of people, period. Not even just women. So, yeah, man. And I think you do that. I really think you do that. I think you give us the conscious, you give us the sexy, the sassy, um, mm. you give you. us the, the empowerment of, of, of a black woman. Like you, you actually do that. You do it already. And it's just for you to just keep on. They're going to try and box you. They're going to try and push you this way, that way. But continue to just, like you said, remember the morals, remember the values. And you stand by them. You say, if it can't be this way, then it doesn't go that way. Yeah. <laughs> this is, this this is your thing, I'm so I'm so glad that you said that because one thing that a lot of people will encounter, if there's anyone here that is like in the music industry or creative industry or thinking of getting into it, yeah, mm-hmm. and you have a special gift and you're talented in what you're doing, yeah, there's yeah. going to be a lot of people you encounter that make you feel like, oh, you need me in order to get to X, Y, and Z. But the T is, you are the prize. Yeah. Okay, that's why they're coming to you. Yes. That's why they're even approaching you in the first place because you have something to offer. And I want you guys to never, ever forget that. Never, ever forget that because that's what's going to have you moving all mad thinking, oh my gosh, like I've got to bend my back over because if I don't take up this opportunity, no, no. If they let the opportunity with you slide, they messed up, unfortunately. This is, this is how you have to think about yourself mm-hmm. and what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Can we have a round of applause, please, for Shay Universe? Bat, 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 all day. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much for your time, Shay. Thank Thank you so much. I want to give the audience a few moments to give Shay her flowers because we're not waiting. We're not waiting at the coffin. We're not waiting at the funeral. We want you to hear it clearly, okay? So, guys, what I want you to do in the comment section give Shay her flowers. Let her know how oh, you feel oh. about her music. Let, me, let us know about how you feel about her as a person. Now is your time. <laughs> now is your <sighs> time. Don't do this to me because I'll actually cry on this live. Like, it's re- you know. it's to cry <laughs> if you need guys, to cry. Leave a little light something, you know what I'm saying? A little love heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I said a little love heart. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I'm going to floor it into the world. Guys, shit. Guys. Queen Aww. through and through. Wayne Jordan, flower, 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 flowers. I'm receiving the flowers. I'm putting them Receive in a bunch. I'm putting them in my imaginary base. Come on. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, guys. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for tuning in as well. Thank you for tuning in. Wayne says, oh, awesome, good, radiant, bro. powerful. Jardini says, Shay, your gifted soul. Your music is beautiful. My favourite soul artist. Oh, girl. <laughs> I'm sending you lots of love. Lots and of love, nice man. to see the beautiful and the real JK Fizz. Oh, appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. God sent. And, you know, in, in, in music, it's funny because they, especially with the MOBOs that, the MOBO nominations that came out, and mm-hmm. the Grammy, nomination, Grammy nominations that came out. One of the mm-hmm. main topics in discussions has been, do we really appreciate our own as artists before they go towards the world? Mm-hmm. And I feel, you know, sometimes we can want the world to appreciate us, but there's love at home, but it's in a certain area. And mm. there's a certain tribe that love you. But sometimes we overlook them and we're like, yeah, but what about them? What about them? And mm. I want you to con- always remember your tribe. Hey, mm. when your tribe loves you, you're set. Because yeah, they will follow true. you. They will follow you to that world that you want. They will follow you to Nigeria, America. They will follow that's you wherever. True. So just keep that's feeding, true. keep loving the tribe. And, you know, they're in here today, as you can clearly see. These are the people mm-hmm. that will ride regardless you know regardless so we support you i appreciate every single one of you guys from the bottom of my heart and i see wayne jordan in the chat said great interview indeed man this was this was literally chef's kiss great interview Ah, (laughs) i really enjoyed it oh good 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 
Well, we're going to say good night. If you need anything, Shay, you know I've got you. Oh, thank Whatever you. you need promoting, just slide it across. We'll trumpet that. We're going to be waiting on Sunday. <laughs> we're going to be waiting for whatever you just, Wait, I'm just know. I'm waiting on you at the door. <laughs> Woo! Just know we've Woo! got, we have you. We're here to support you. Um, and I know everybody in the chat is as well. So we wish you all the best and um, have a lovely evening, man. Thank you. You two loves, hugs, kisses, guys. See you. Bye. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for 21 questions. Ah, great one. Um, ah, man, big up to all of you, man. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for giving her her flowers because that's very, very important. While she's here, and even if you want to say more, jump on her DMs or jump on Instagram, Twitter, and let her feel your love because we're here. We're in the flesh now. Let us give her her flowers. Um, we're going to put this on Instagram, our IGTV, our YouTube, and we're also going to put it on our podcast platforms, and you can access them through the link in our bio. Um, I'm going to be back here next Thursday, 9 p.m., with another guest. Um, but thank you for every single person uh, that has joined us. If it's your first time, keep following us, man. Uh, we love newcomers. We love people who've never even experienced what we do. Um, this is on behalf of the platform called The Sit Down. So we normally do what we did here, live in person but corona corona but soon we'll get back to it so thank you so much once again thursday next thursday 9 p.m um and yeah peace out oh one thing we have a link in the bio that says feedback so if you would love to give us our feedback to know what we're doing right or what we're doing wrong let us know we we'll welcome it all so click the link in the bio click on feedback and uh, leave your information all right take care peace